What's up ladies and gents? Welcome back to the channel. It's been like six days since I put a video up, but I have very good reason for that. And that is because this past Labor Day was the first Labor Day since I started in the car business in 2004 that I was actually off from work. Obviously, Labor Day weekend being a big sale weekend for automotive dealerships, uh, but when you don't have a lot of cars to sell, what really is the point of being here? And we were fortunate enough that the owners decided to close down the store and give us the day off, which was great for me personally because I was off Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Uh, you know, so I had like a three-day uh, three-day weekend there, which is very very rare in the car business. This is a 2018 Impala. It has. 17,457 miles on it. I actually sold this car when it was brand new. Uh, the family didn't need it anymore, so they sold it back to us. And now I have an appointment coming in at one o'clock today uh, for someone who's looking to buy it. Uh, unfortunately, they are folks who lost vehicles in the New Jersey flooding that happened during Hurricane Ida or Tropical Storm Ida, whatever it was when it moved through New Jersey here. Uh, so they're gonna Uber up here uh, for one o'clock. And if they like the car and everything goes well, they'll be taking it home today. This Impala is all loaded up. It pretty much has everything you can get. It's a 2018 2LZ sedan. Original MSRP was 40,555. It does have the Premier Confidence package, which gave you like the forward collision alert and the lane departure warning, those extra safety features. Uh, this does have adaptive cruise control, which is a great feature uh, where, you know, you set your cruise for 65. If somebody slows down, the vehicle will slow down by itself. It can actually slow down all the way to a full stop if need be. It also has the sunroof over our head, which is a nice uh, panoramic sunroof. Uh, you have a premier convenience package, which gives you like memory driver's seat, uh, you know, for the tilting telescopic wheel, which is power. It'll also link up your mirrors and all that sort of stuff to your driver memory. It has the heated steering wheel. It has the heated outside mirrors, all that sort of stuff. Um, again, pretty much, uh, pretty much everything you can get in an Impala for that year. Now, while we're waiting for my customer uh, to come in, I want to tell you a story. And it's a story that's going to take us back to the late 90s. Now, my first car was a 1993 Mercury Cougar. Um, I loved the car. You know, it really didn't matter what car I had. I just wanted the freedom of movement, the freedom of having a car and basically being able to go where I want and, and you know, do the things that I wanted to do. So my 1993 Cougar, as you see here, turquoise blue. It had the half uh, Landau roof or whatever you call it had the chrome package, you know, it's a sharp looking car for its time. Anyways, what I want to do is I want to relate that car to my one of my current cars, the 2019 Chevrolet Bolt. Now, obviously, I don't have the ability to bring a Mercury Cougar back from uh, back from the past. Also, I wanted to actually record this video in Bayonne where I grew up at the exact location that this story happened. Uh, I'm not going to have time to do that either. So we're going to do it right here on the lot and we're going to use this Camaro as a stand in because the Cougar and his Camaro are both two door coupes. I bought that Mercury Cougar in 1997. Uh, I was just about to graduate from high school. Uh, like I said, first car, uh, awesome. Loved having a car and the freedom of being able to kind of cruise around and do your own thing. Uh, I had the car for, I would say, I think, if I remember correctly, about three years. So right around the year 2000, I decided that I wanted to trade it in and get something else. Uh, that something else was a used Dodge Durango uh, that I was buying from a dealership out in Pennsylvania. Now. The day before I was gonna pick that vehicle up, I decided that I wanted to take one last ride in the Mercury Cougar, uh, you know, just a little one final drive around town just to kind of you know, reminisce the memories of the car and, and you know, kind of say my goodbyes, if you will. And as I'm doing that, I'm on Kennedy Boulevard in Bayonne, New Jersey. I'm probably 10 or 12 blocks from the house. I'm heading back home. And all of a sudden I start to smell like wires burning. Like I start to smell something weird. That I never smelled before. So as I'm driving, I'm kind of thinking like, man, what is that? Is that the car? Is that something outside? And right as that happens, all of a sudden, white smoke starts appearing from under the hood, right along the base of the window. And it starts flowing up over the windshield. So immediately I'm like, oh man, my car is on fire. Like what's up with this? As I continue to drive, you know, within a few seconds, all the needles and the gauges started going wacky. Everything was moving around, things were lit up, the tachometer and the gauges and everything was going crazy. So at this point I said, okay, I need to pull over, I need to get out of the car. So I pulled over into a bus stop. This was on like 13th Street and Kennedy Boulevard in Bayonne, New Jersey. Uh, I threw the car in park. 
I immediately uh, unbuckled my seatbelt and I decided like I need to get out of the car, but I need to grab my stuff. So I think I had like a CD um, binder of CDs and stuff like that. So I grabbed that stuff, I turned the car off and I jump out of the car. And as I jump out of the car, the smoke started getting worse and I closed the door. I remember seeing a distinct like orange glow underneath the vehicle. So it kind of confirmed in my mind like, yeah, the car's on fire. Smoke was billowing out of the wheel wells. It was coming out, like I said, by the hood, by the base of the window, uh, you know, just all over the place. So the car was on fire. The items that I took out of the car, I just kind of placed on the sidewalk next to me. I grabbed my flip phone and I immediately called the non-emergency number of the Bayonne Police Department, which for whatever reason, I knew off the top of my head, 201-858-6900. So I called them up. I said, listen, it's not necessarily an emergency, but my car is on Kennedy Boulevard. It's on fire. Can you dispatch and send a fire truck? They said, sure thing. Do you want to stand on the line? I said, no, not necessary. I'll be here. So I basically hang up the phone. I then called my father up and I was like, listen, dad, the car is on fire. I'm on Kennedy Boulevard, you know, take a ride over here. And at that point I decided to wait. So as I'm waiting, I decide maybe I should look and see what is happening under the hood. Cause at this point there was a portion of the hood, probably about, you know, maybe like a two foot circle or one and a half foot circle that the paint was starting to bubble. And it was like the hood was buckling and you can kind of see things were starting to like really heat up and get, you know, I guess a, a little melted. Still had the same orange glow underneath the vehicle, but what I decided to do was get in the car and pop the hood. So I grabbed the hood latch, popped it open, came around to the front, and as I was about to open up the hood, just to see how bad or what was going on under there, I realized, well, wait a minute, if I pop the hood, like what if like a fireball hits me in the face? I better just wait for the fire department. And at about that same time, I started hearing the fire engines, the sirens and all, because the firehouse is only like three, four blocks away. So I said, let me just back up and let me just wait. And that's exactly what I did. In about the two or three minutes I was waiting for the fire truck, uh, you know, the hood started really getting like blackened and it was like buckling again and it was smoking and the paint at that point in a certain part had melted off. Um, you know, it was still smoking with like white smoke and stuff like that. So I was just waiting, fire truck ends up pulling up. So when the guys get out, like one guy had a fire extinguisher, one guy had a real long pry bar that you would use on the battery, on the terminal to kind of pop the battery terminal. They had asked me what side the battery was on. And then at that point they told me to kind of back up and they were gonna pop the hood and, and put out the fire. So we did just that. I showed them where the latch was. They lifted the hood. And to my surprise, really to all of our surprises, whatever was on fire had basically burnt out already. And on top of the alternator, which where's the alternator is all the way down here in this car, uh, there was a little flame. I mean, it was a candle sized flame still burning. We all kind of looked at it, started laughing. They shot it with the fire extinguisher. You know, he still did the same type of thing. They made sure there was nothing else burning. And at that point it was like, okay, let's, uh, the car won't run. It won't start. Let's just push it out of the bus stop onto the side and I'll figure out how to tow it home or whatever, you know, however I would get it home. The reason I wanted to tell you that story was obviously because right now there is a recall on the Chevrolet Bolts uh, due to a risk of fire. And I actually found this article today because back in the 90s, we didn't really have the internet. Uh, but Ford issues safety recall of 8.7 million vehicles. This article was published on April 27th of 1996. Uh, this was the largest safety recall by a single manufacturer saying it would replace the ignition switch in 8.7 million Ford and Mercury vehicles between 1988 and 1993, including the Mercury Cougar. Now in this article, it basically says that there was about 2000 fires that were uh, triggered by a faulty ignition system uh, with 28 minor injuries. Uh, there was a class action lawsuit back then for people trying to get money to recoup the fact that their houses were burnt or damaged because the car was parked in their garage. So, you know, this is back in the late 90s. It's a gasoline engine car. Uh, you know, so the same problems that could exist in a machine that runs on gas is the same problems you can get in a machine that's run by electric. You know, it's really, it's, it's gonna happen. There's gonna be, anytime you develop anything, there's gonna be things that maybe you overlook, maybe there's things you miss, maybe there's things that, you know, you didn't plan for. And the best thing you can do in a situation like this is what GM is doing, stop selling them, recall them and just you know find the root cause of what the problem may be and rectify it now when it comes to the chevrolet bolt as a consumer because i own one and i drive one uh, my car has twenty-eight thousand five hundred and thirty-five miles on it it's basically two years uh, since i purchased it it's a three-year lease so i have one year left to drive i don't plan on doing any kind of a buyback i plan on keeping the vehicle i like the way it drives uh it's awesome as far as range and it fits our family perfectly uh, but we did do obviously what general motors recommends you do so the first thing they recommend you do is you go to your energy screen here go to charging 
go to your target charge level and make sure you reduce it to 90%. So I guess one of the things they found is that the fires that they're investigating, which I believe there's a total of 10 that I could find on the internet. I know there's two or three that they're investigating with possibility of 10 overall. Um, I don't know those numbers. They came from the internet and you know we know about the internet, maybe not everything is true. But what they found was, I guess, that they don't want the battery to get to that highest level of charge. So we drop it to 90%. The other thing they don't want you to do is have it be below 70 miles of remaining charge. So we're trying to keep our battery charged on a daily basis or so and just keep it you know, anywhere between that 100 and 200 miles, which is very easy to do. You just top it off overnight. They also recommend in an abundance of caution not to park the car in your garage because if the car did catch on fire and it's inside your house in your garage, obviously that can lead to, to a major problem, which I believe in Vermont it already has. One car did burn and it took a house with it, which is very unfortunate. Uh, that's the same thing that happened in the late 90s with the Fords and the Mercury's. You know, if the car caught on fire and it was in your house, obviously you're going to have a major problem. So the best thing to do is try to park it, you know, in the driveway, a little bit back away or park it away from things. This way, if the unthinkable does happen, uh, you know, and the car caught on fire, it can burn itself out and it doesn't take anything with it. So now that I did the, the recommendations that GM asked us to do, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to drive the car and I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna wait and see what the fix is. Now, obviously if I start smelling something weird or something uh, you know seems off or gauges and things start going crazy, kind of like I experienced in the past, I'm gonna park the car and jump out. You know, we're gonna make sure we get out of the car and we're not in the car, you know, if that happens. Personally, I just don't feel like it's gonna happen. You know, my car was not part of the first recall. So the first recall was on 2017, 18, and 19. It was on uh, on certain models which had batteries that came from a certain battery factory. Uh, my car was not part of that recall. A couple weeks ago, they extended the same recall to all bolts up right up to the 2022 model year. So, you know, now my car is part of that recall. But if you go back to my playlist, of bolt videos, you can see I charge it all the time to, to full 100%. I've driven the car a number of times to basically no battery, uh, you know, just to see what happens and what lights come on and how it operates. And, you know, doing those different things, you know, prior to this recall even coming out, gave me the confidence to just keep driving the car. Um, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And hopefully in about a year when my lease is due back, I can replace it with a brand new Silverado EV, if it's out yet. Give up, plate. Yep. My Impala folks are here, so right now they're outside. They're checking out the vehicle, going through everything, making sure uh, you know stuff works and that they're they're satisfied. The guy knows a lot about GM cars. It's pretty cool. He's uh, actually teaching me some stuff about the engine and things like that and how they actually build and design it. Uh, so he definitely knows what he's talking about. This is the Impala. Okay. I don't know the stock number. I got it. But uh, I'll put a plate on it. I'll let them test drive it, and when they come back, we'll see what they think. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got ourselves a car deal on the 2018 Chevrolet Impala. We're going to get it, uh, they were going to just buy it outright, but rather than going to the bank and getting a bank check and stuff like that, they're going to finance it. And then when they get their first payment, they'll just pay the car off. We're actually going to use the same bank uh, that they use for financing to make it even easier for them. And uh, this way we can get them on the road uh, without them having to go back and forth to the branch. One of the cool things about uh, this business is meeting new people and learning about them and you know just listening to their stories. And they wanted me to go on a test drive. Now, I really haven't been on a test drive since the whole pandemic started, but I said, sure, I'll go on a ride with you. They really didn't know the area. They wanted me to be able to give them like lefts and rights and stuff like that. And then once they kind of realized where they were, uh, this gentleman is an engineer. He actually built a number of buildings in the Novartis uh, campus that's not that far away. So for him, it was pretty cool to kind of drive down that road and see like the way the, the you know, the way the complex has grown and see the original buildings that he worked on and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it's pretty cool. It's always fun just learning about new people and, and talking to new people and, and just really giving them a pressure-free, you know, car buying experience.
This is a certified vehicle. So with certified vehicles, we make sure everything that comes with the vehicle is here. You know, so both keys, owner's manuals, all the books, that sort of stuff. But in this instance, we actually have the original 2018 sales brochure as well, uh, which is a nice little addition to, uh, to the car. Pretty neat. All right, we got another happy client on the road, burning gas. So our day's done. We're leaving in about five minutes. I'm just gonna move two vehicles into those uh, holes in the front line. This way, Saturday morning, everything looks good as people drive by. And then I'm gonna head home for the day and edit this video. I'm gonna apologize in advance, just in case the wind noise was bad in portions of this. Uh, I got this little foam thing on the GoPro, which helps sometimes, but I really don't know how it helps until I get home and I start editing the footage. So hopefully it's uh, pleasant to watch. And I appreciate you watching. Do you have any general questions about the car business, the times we're in, anything like that, definitely put it down in the comments. I'm happy to kind of go through them and answer as many as I can. And uh, a lot of people have been commenting about, whoops. A lot of people have been commenting about like, what is it like with no real cars to sell? You know, how do you make money and how are you surviving and things like that, which I'll get by. No worries there. I'm doing just fine. But if you wanted to support me, well, you can head over to Dave B. Sell Chevy dot com and you can pick up a day b cell chevy crew pack uh or an air freshener for your car or a keychain you know whatever you want so if you want check that out that supports me and i'd appreciate it um, if not no big deal i appreciate you just watching the channel and and giving thumbs up and commenting on my videos so you guys have a great night and i'll see you in the next one